<laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well done, everybody in the art department. Contender conscience right there. You know, remember, like, the good guy on your shoulder, uh, the bad guy on your shoulder. Oh, they Who are you going right to listen to? Yeah, they, they yeah, yeah. Right too. Well, the devil went down to Georgia right here, or Secaucus, <laughs> I should say. So I'm going to give you a team, and you tell me if you're, you're the good guy on the shoulder or the bad guy on the shoulder. We're going to start with the L.A. Kings, but before we do that, we want to show you the strength of schedule mm. down the stretch and just kind of lay out what the road ahead looks like. So the L.A. Kings, of the teams we're talking about, maybe the easiest of the schedules, 522, the uh, opponent point percentage right there. So, given that information, uh, Connie, I'll start with you. You the good guy or you the bad guy? Uh, I'm going to be the good guy here. Uh, I like what L.A. has done. Todd McClellan has done a fantastic job as a head coach. Uh, Rob Blake, and, and before the season started, I didn't think L.A. would be in this position, but they certainly are. And there's Todd McClellan, who uh, has really got his troops playing well together. And keep in mind, they are still without Drew Doughty, Mikey Anderson, their top two defensemen. Uh, they should be coming back shortly. I think they're going to be able to ride it out until they do eventually rejoin the L.A. Kings. But uh, they've been hanging on. And as I mentioned, or as we just looked at, relatively easy schedule for them the rest of the way. Listen, there's no easy games in the NHL. But I really like what Deneau has brought to the team. It's taken a little bit of pressure off of Kopitar. Um, they should be able to finish on a high note, especially getting those healthy bodies back. Um, I like their chances. All right, Steve, taking the angelic approach. Go ahead. Mwah. May the devil speak. Yes. May the devil speak. I, yeah, you know what? I, I've been so impressed with Todd McClellan, what he's done this year, what they've done, brought in this year, this young group and this older, this 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 bridging. But right there is why I'm not going Kings. So with the injuries that they have, it's incredible what they've done, what they've hung on to. I just see the bottom falling out on them here coming down the stretch. It's been a great year. It's a building year for that organization. I'm very impressed again with Rob Blake, everyone there, but I just don't think they have it this year. All right. Uh, next team up, the Edmonton Oilers sitting third right now in the Pacific Division. Again, strength of schedule here, tied for the second hardest remaining schedule in the NHL. That's the Preds and the Oilers. So we're talking Oilers right now. Perry, I'll start with you. Good guy, bad guy. Where are you coming down? You know what? I just happen to be a bad guy again. Yeah. I'm just feeling negative tonight. I'm just feeling negative tonight. It. Yeah, you know, it just it's laying down the law. You, you know, Edmonton, yeah, they're playing better. They brought in Kane, but again, uh, they just haven't done enough to, to, to impress me, to, to show their complete game, to show that they're ready to step into that playoff picture in the West. Yeah, it, it, there are a lot of question marks there, uh, but something that hasn't been a question mark is the change in coaching. Uh, they brought in Jay Woodcroft, uh, Dave Manson also came up from the minors, and he's changed the culture of this hockey team. And, they're giving up fewer goals. Koskinen's playing a little better. Smith's playing a little better. Um, I, I like the team concept of defense now. And even though Dave Tippett was a great defensive coach during his time, I think maybe the team was starting to kind of block him out a little bit. And, and they just seem to have a little bit of a different feel. And, and sometimes, unfortunately, it's the coach who pays the price. But now all of a sudden you see the Edmonton Oilers believing in themselves. And they're on a little bit of a roll here. They typically can outscore their mistakes. That's not always a good recipe for success in the playoffs. But for right now, uh, I like their chances of going to the play, making the playoffs. All right. Uh, next up, the Nashville Predators, as we mentioned. This tied for the second hardest remaining schedule in the NHL with those Edmonton Oilers we just talked about. Uh, Connie, I'll start with you on this one. Are you the good guy on the shoulder? Or are you the guy uh, talking some nonsense into our ears? Uh, this pains me, but I'm going to be the bad guy. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, because I really like the, uh, the National Predators, love what they've done this year. But again, surprising a lot of people. But look who they have left on their schedule. St. Louis. This is the last two weeks of the schedule. St. Louis. This is how they finish up. St. Louis, Calgary, Tampa Bay, Minnesota, Calgary, Colorado. And then the only uh, easy team there, the Arizona Coyotes, the last game of the year. So... Uh, I've just noticed a little bit of a weakness, the goaltending, the last little while. UC Saros isn't the UC Saros from a couple of weeks ago. Will he get tired? Is he going to hit a wall? We'll have to wait and see. But right now, uh, I'm against the National Predators. Oh, good guy for I'm a good Let's guy. Go. Good guys. All right. You, you know what? I, I, I love Nashville. This team, the, the way they've come back the, this, this, this season uh, as a whole. And I love UC Saros as a goaltender. Yes, he struggled. I look at that guy. It's, it's, he's, this isn't a guy that's going to crumble because he's struggling. This is a guy that's going to come out there and prove he's the number one guy like he's done before. And I think they're going to use that strength of a schedule to be feeling nice and confident 
going right into that into the playoffs. All right. So uh, I don't know confidence wise where the Vegas Golden Knights come down or where their fan base comes down, but it feels like they've been hanging on to the second wild card spot for about six months right now. Um, strength of schedule, relatively, I don't want to say easy, but maybe favorable down the stretch. Good guy, bad guy. I'm the bad guy again. <laughs> and, you know, I look at the Vegas Golden Knights, and obviously injuries really jump out at you against some key guys, whether it's Stone, Pacioretty. Uh, the list went on and on, actually, throughout the whole year. And here's some noticeable guys. Nolan Patrick, uh, Riley Smith, Mark Stone still out with that back injury. Uh, William Carrier, another defenseman, out. Uh, what really kind of pains me is I'm worried about the culture of the team right now. They get rid of Marc-Andre Fleury, a fan favorite, a, a favorite in the dressing room. Nate Schmidt, same thing. Uh, remember, these were part of the misfit crew that took these the, the Vegas Golden Knights all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals in year one. And speaking of Stanley Cup Finals in year one, Gerard Gallant, their head coach, unceremoniously kind of booted, uh, fired, caught a lot of people by surprise, myself included. I wonder what that does to a dressing room. Sometimes you're looking over your shoulder. Uh, I don't think it brings the guys together. But that's just me. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to be the bad guy in Vegas. Oh, and I'm, of course, I get to be the good guy there again. There you go. <laughs> I like this. Uh, you, know, you know, I like Vegas. Uh, I know they got some injuries and got some guys out. We don't know how long that'll work. But you know what? They got Robin Leonard. And I know that it's tough. You, you, you look at him like, oh, they lose that Tana. But Robin Leonard is a kid I got to play with in the American League when I was the old part. And he comes out. And he is going to establish this net. He is driven. He absolutely wants to show that he's the number one guy, that they made the right decision, and he is going to backstop this team to a playoff. If they do get in the playoffs and they are fully healthy, they get the patch ready, the stones back. Is this a team that we think might could go on a, a deep run like we maybe started the season saying? I, I have no doubt that they could. Uh, with, with what they lost, I think they'd have been a lot stronger, obviously, with the goalie tandem, with the moves they've made. But that being said, this Vegas team just has magic around them. They just find a way to win. And, and I think if they could find that positivity, they just find that coming down the stress, get into the playoffs somehow, get those guys back, that would be another emotional lift for them. Get those mm -hmm. leaders back that they'd need, the Stones, the Pacioretties, those guys you need in the locker room to help gel that team together after, like, after which the moves they made, like you said, yeah. and they'll be just fine. I think it's just going to be so tough when I look at Colorado and Calgary, and Minnesota, and let's say they match up against St. Louis. Uh, I don't think they can get past the first round. But then again, I'm the bad guy. So. Yeah. Oh, I love it. You're sitting on the shoulder going, not a chance, buddy, not a chance. All right, last but not least, the Dallas Stars, and this is a team that, much like we said, the Vegas Golden Knights have been in that second wild card spot. They've been, it feels like, just one point out forever. They're one point behind Vegas, but they do have three games in hand. Good guy, bad guy. I'm going to be the good guy this time, and I'm glad because one of the best guys I know, a former coach of mine, Rick Bonus, is the head coach of this team, and he will bring the best out of these guys. And I know it's tough. You know, you're playing against the Maple Leafs and the Lightning and the Wild, uh, but the rest of those teams they should be able to take care of. When you guys have guys like Rupe Hints and Robertson and Pavelski on your top line, and then you get Ben and Sagan, who helped take them to the Stanley Cup Finals a couple of years ago, there's plenty of, of, of belief in that room. There's plenty of talent in the room. And I look at John Klingberg, who's without a contract. He's got something to prove for himself. He's playing lights out on the back end. Uh, they could do some damage. I see them making the playoffs. All right, rain on their parade. Go ahead. Back to where I'm comfortable, being the bad guy. Uh, you know what, Dallas? Just I, I just haven't quite seen enough from them as well. Uh, they, I, I love what they have with, with what they've got going with Pavelski. Sagan and Ben have kind of vanished at times on them. Uh, their D zone, their D structure gets away from them. I just haven't quite seen that complete game. Uh, again, this one does pay me. Rick Bonus. I mean, there's nothing but respect for Rick Bonus. A lot of the guys in that locker room. Uh, this one actually does hurt a little bit being the bad guy, but I'm going to be, and the Dallas Stars aren't going to make it. I love that segment. That was great. That was fun. Yeah, I, our God, that see that picture works. again. Yeah, yeah, can we see it again? We can't hear it. I look like I gained about 20 pounds. Throw that thing back up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. <laughs> You guys look very comfortable. I guess I need a red suit. Yeah. I never I never thought of it. The horns on you are perfect. Yeah. I love that. That's All right, contender conscience. We'll see if it's a reoccurring segment here on NHL Network.